All right, what's up, fam? The tier list is back this week by mm-hmm. popular demand. By popular demand. So today we're talking about all the bad habits that are destroying your productivity, your health, your success, your grades, your <laughs> pretty much just ruining life. your life. <laughs> Uh, we've already made a video talking about all the best habits that you want to focus on building. Uh, we'll put a link in the description, but today is just solely on focusing on the bad habits. Right. And obviously bad habits are really hard to break. Mm-hmm. So we divided them into tiers to help you decide which ones you just start quitting first and then which ones you can get away with in more moderation or more slowly. Yeah. So the breakdown of the tiers are as follows. So first we have the trash tier. It's not the worst, but you should start cutting back in moderation. So try to limit these habits to no more than once a day at most. Next, we have the garbage <laughs> tier. Garbage, just piles of trash. Yeah, so garbage is worse. Uh, garbage tier, you should cut back even more. So I would limit this to uh, once a week at most. Mm-hmm. And then finally, we have the dumpster tier. It's a communal collection of garbage. Yeah. Dumpster is just the worst of the worst. Yeah. So you want to try and just cut these out of your life completely as soon as possible. So for the layout of this video, we're going to start with habits that affect your productivity, and then we'll kind of move on to habits that affect your health. And then towards the end of the video, we'll touch on all the terrible study habits that are just killing your grades. Mm. So the first habit is doing work in bed. So our beds are for sleep and for sex. But when you do work in bed, you can become drowsy quite easily because your brain has been kind of primed to the idea of winding down to sleep in this Mm. location already. So if you make this a habit, um, that can happen. You just get tired quickly. But the opposite can happen too, where you won't be able to sleep. Uh, If your brain is now primed to working in bed, then you're always going to be ramped up thinking Mm -hmm. that it's time to work instead of sleeping. Right. So the whole point of all of this is to pay attention to environmental cues. So if you study at your dinner table, for example, like where you normally eat food, Mm -hmm. when you're sitting down there, you're just going to be like thinking about snacking the whole time or making trips back to the, to the fridge. Grumbling stomach. You're right. Grumbling stomach. Or, (laughs) or if you are studying on your couch, watching TV, or if the TV is just playing in the background, then you're just going to be like in the mood to watch TV and not actually study. Yeah. So I would say that working in bed is dumpster tier. I would just cut it out of your life completely. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's really bad for your back and your posture. Yeah, my back. So the second habit is multitasking. So multitasking is a term that was originally used to describe computer performance, but human brains are wired to focus on one task at a time. For example, if you're watching this video right now with your notes open in front of you as if you were studying, then you just fail to multitask. If you're about to fall asleep to this video with your book open, then you just failed <laughs> two tasks at once. <laughs> yeah, so research has shown that when your brain has to actually switch from one task to another, mm. there's like a residual delay effect where you actually have a worse performance doing both those tasks, right? Yeah. And it would actually then take you longer to finish any of those tasks. So multitasking has a negative effect on your attention, your long-term memory, and just getting things done while you're doing them. Yeah, however, I'm sure that most of us will multitask at least once a day on something minor, <laughs> like looking at your phone while you brush your teeth or mm-hmm. you know, listening to music in the car while you're driving. Or- so technically, this would be a trash tier habit, but mm-hmm. for the really important tasks that require more focus, like trying to study and having a movie playing in the background, I would avoid that altogether. Mm-hmm. Even though I sometimes do that. <laughs> but what I do is I... I Mute, mute the TV and I just put subtitles on and I have headphones in so I'm not even like paying attention it's just for vibes <laughs> so uh, force you, you're trying to force yourself to read the I'm subtitles forcing, I'm forcing myself to be okay with having distractions around but then just narrowing them out and not paying attention to them as long as it's Avengers <laughs> it's always a marvel next we have listening to loud noises and this is often a bad habit that people are unaware of even doing and also unaware of the negative consequences Yeah, the science shows that your hearing can quickly and permanently be crippled if you're not careful. So for reference, um, sound levels above 85 dB, so like being in close range to a lawnmower or a leaf blower, for example, this can cause ear damage with exposure of more than two hours. But it's possible in some cases where sound over 110 dB, 
like a chainsaw or a helicopter or even listening with headphones on near max volume mm-hmm. that can cause permanent damage to your ears in just five minutes yeah or, or, or even like blasting your music while you're driving in your car i know a lot of my friends like to really get into the zone when they drive probably also feels the road rage <laughs> when they're listening to something that loud or like going to concerts too often and you're sitting like right in front of the speaker yeah probably a bad idea yeah front row uh-huh in, but in general, hearing loss later in life puts you at high risk for cognitive problems too, like depression as well. So I would put super loud sounds in the dumpster category. Mm. Yeah, avoid it completely or try to use earplugs. Um, turn down the volume whenever it's possible and take frequent breaks from headphones. I even know some people who get like ear infections from wearing headphones too much. So really? it could also be uh, dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And you might find that when you put your headphones back on, it's actually a lot louder than you had it before um, because your ears have been blasted and they've kind of adjusted to that higher mm-hmm. level of sound. Mm-hmm. So taking a break actually lets them kind of calibrate again to, to yeah, normal sound. Kind of reset, yeah. Next, we have eating an unhealthy meal first thing in the day. Mm-hmm. So the first meal of the day, usually breakfast, can really set the tone for the rest of your day. Yeah, basically you've gone all night without eating or drinking, so your body is looking for sustenance. You need fuel for your brain to process and get work done in the morning. But when you start off your day eating a bunch of donuts, for example, Mm -hmm. or a bowl of sugary cereal, then you're basically setting yourself up to be hungry again pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And probably a sugar crash later on. Yeah, although crunch berries are pretty good. (laughs) <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch, right? Only berries. <laughs> but so what would we do instead? Probably go for like protein, right? Mm-hmm. Protein, fiber, yeah. complex carbs, if you're going to have any carbs at all. Avoid like the simple carbs because all those provide good sources of energy for the brain. And this is like especially important if you have a big exam or a presentation or something later that day. Yeah. For those of us who do intermittent fasting and we skip breakfast... Uh, This bad habit is even more important because your first meal a day needs to be composed of, you know, healthy whole foods. Otherwise, you've just wasted your fast. Yeah, agreed. But I'm going to put this in the garbage tier, not quite dumpster. So maybe once a week you can have like a cheat meal, you know. Get those, sure. get those crunch berries just because yeah. I mean we bought them already so might as well, <laughs> might as well eat them <laughs> <laughs> but definitely don't make it like a daily daily thing yeah to... so this is a good time to thank the sponsor of today's video athletic greens the product ag1 has been a part of my breakfast and morning routine for the past couple of years ag1 is an all-in-one uh, multivitamin minerals adaptogen pre and probiotic blend you basically get all your daily essentials that you need conveniently in one scoop uh, I take it in the morning with my breakfast, so I get that you know peace of mind that I'm covered for the rest of the day. So if things get busy at the hospital and I don't eat my fruits and vegetables, or if I go out with my friends and I have a beer and a pizza, like literally nothing nutritious on my plate, then I'll at least have that daily essentials that I need. So go to our special link in the description below. Right now they're doing a generous offer where you'll get uh, free travel packs of AG1 as well as a full year supply of vitamin D also free. So definitely take advantage of that offer. Link in the description below. So for the next habit we're gonna talk about is eating less processed foods, which is kind of similar to what we just talked about in the last one about unhealthy breakfast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but an easy way to figure out if something is processed is if it's prepackaged. Mm-hmm. So like a bag of potato chips or a box of cookies or even canned foods actually yeah. have a lot of additives in them too. Yeah, definitely. Eating processed food frequently is not good for your health and long-term can do some major damage to your gut and your arteries. And eating too much processed foods can interfere with your body's ability to absorb nutrients. And over time, this can actually lead to malnutrition. Mm, Right. So even though you're eating, technically you're still malnourished, right? And as we know, malnutrition affects a lot of different areas of development, growth, uh, brain development, cognitive performance and stuff. So in the short term, it can actually have a really detrimental effect on your productivity. Yeah, at this point, we've both done videos on unhealthy diets where we actually measure our blood glucose. And you can see the detrimental effects that it had on our bodies. So definitely check out those videos after this one. We'll leave links in the description below. And honestly, I would say to just eliminate processed foods from your diet completely. But there will be circumstances where you have to you know, rely on a quick processed meal for convenience or financial reasons. 
if you didn't plan ahead of time. So for that reason, I'll put this in the garbage tier. So mm. it's okay to do once a week. Mm. Next, we have social media for leisure. So this is not including if you use social media for marketing or business or something mm. like that. Because using it for leisure can sometimes lead to just mindless scrolling that yeah. for some people can just go on for an hour, mm -hmm. if not more. Because the thing is, you just go through the slew of content, most of which is probably not even interesting to you. Mm -hmm. But just the idea that that next piece of content might really intrigue you, it just gives mm -hmm. you just enough dopamine for you to want to keep scrolling. Yeah, it keeps you hanging on. Yeah. That's something might come up. That's good. And I want to say like the other negative part about using social media for leisure is that you subconsciously or consciously start comparing yourself to all the people that you see on social media. Maybe it's your friends or even other influencers who live who live these lives that are probably not that realistic especially if they're posting on social media like i feel like someone's always in bali or on the on the beach or something yeah even like i know people who will post pictures like of their vacation like six months later after the vacation it's like you're not even in bali right now like why are we still getting bali photos from this it's just setting all these unrealistic standards yeah. and stuff yeah it's just uh trying to get your attention trying to make them show that their life is a little different but it could really have a detrimental effect on like your mental health if you see that too often uh, but of course social media isn't always bad if we use it to connect with family or friends and stuff yeah so in moderation basically uh, i would put social media in the trash tier it's okay to do once a day and the best way to go about it is to set a time limit for yourself so that you don't get out of control mm -hmm. or just delete that completely <laughs> All right, next we have TV, movies, and video games. This is actually similar to social media, so there's not a whole lot more to add in this category. But you can definitely find yourself binging like whole series on Netflix um, or playing video games for hours longer than you intended to. Yeah, so both of these activities can easily cause you to lose sleep, which can set you way back or set you behind for the following day. Mm -hmm. Well, at least when you're watching movies, like movies only last a certain amount of time. So there's a ending to it but it's a huge time commitment yeah i would say the main difference here compared to using social media is that watching tv or playing video games can potentially be more social mm. if you want to do it with friends yeah that's true uh yeah i guess that's a hard one to say then i would still think that watching tv and playing video games is okay to do like once a day i guess if you do it in moderation sure. kind of like social kind of like the social media thing we said above but watching like an entire movie every single day could be kind of counterproductive that's hours down the drain each day that you probably could spend on something else um so i don't know i would probably just put this garbage tier yeah i don't know as long as you're able to limit yourself to just one episode or like mm -hmm. one game but the whole problem is that people can't restrain themselves yeah so sure trash tier with restrictions sure and you because you've got to live a little you know but just be conscious about it Next, we have not going outside. So not getting any natural sunlight. That's a bad habit. I think the statistic is that the average American spends something like 93% of their life indoors or in a car, something crazy like that. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. I mean, I think we probably fit in that category though too. <laughs> we spend most of our time in the hospital or inside. Yeah. My room doesn't even have windows too. So it's like, <laughs> it's like I'm in a cell. It's terrible. But there are like a lot of negative consequences to your health if you're not getting enough vitamin D. Um, mm -hmm. Like really important for like energy, immune system. Mm -hmm. And by the way, don't forget about our Athletic Greens offer mm. where you can get a free year supply of vitamin D. So definitely take advantage of that offer if you work indoors and never go outside. Yeah, in addition to that, your body also needs to see light to regulate the circadian rhythm. And the more natural light instead of artificial light, the better it's going to be. If you're getting terrible sleep at night and you don't have any energy to be productive, one of the fastest and easiest changes is to just literally go outside for like 10 or 15 minutes, get some natural sunlight in the morning. This, of course, is and it'll reset your biological clock. Yeah, I'm going to put this bad habit in the garbage tier. Hmm. I'd say get sunlight every day if you can. But, you know, maybe once a week you might miss. Like I know for myself, this is going to be really hard since I work in the hospital. Sometimes when I'm driving to work, the sun's not even up yet. Mm. And then by the time I get out of work, the, the sun's already set. So mm. um, sometimes I forget to go outside during the daytime or yeah. sometimes I just get too busy. Mm -hmm. So it happens. 
Speaking of sleep, the next habit is sleeping at different times each day. So when you go to bed around the same time every day, you find it both easier to fall asleep and you'll also improve the quality of your sleep. Right. And sleep is probably like the most important thing you can do for your health, your productivity, and your grades. Even if you consider yourself a night owl like me and you can stay up later and you don't really like feel like you ever need to fall asleep, it's still a good idea to go to bed at the same time every night and wake up um, to keep yourself regular, especially if you're not getting enough sunlight. So I know Mike has a lot to say about this habit because this is something that he just fails at. Yeah, I mean, I have no choice right now since I'm a young doctor at the bottom of the totem pole, basically. So I just kind of, I just have to deal with it for now. Mm -hmm. But my schedule is terrible because I work half days and half nights. So right when my body has a chance to readjust, I'm flipping my circadian rhythm again. And I don't even get to sleep at the same time because all my night shifts have different hours. So I'm basically getting the worst of both worlds. Yeah. Well, what are the consequences of that? Well, obviously, I'm tired all the time. You probably noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's been shown that night shift workers in general have a shorter lifespan. So my chances of dying early are just higher. So yeah, sleep is incredibly important. Having an erratic sleep schedule, I'd say, is garbage tier. Hmm. You probably get away with it once a week, maybe for social reasons. But definitely try not to have an erratic schedule leading up to an important exam. Mm-hmm. Okay, next, while we're still on the topic of sleep, I just want to throw this one in there, and that is the bad habit of checking your phone in bed. Mm, yeah, it's a big one. I'm sure a lot of people, including us, do this. Yeah, checking your phone and getting caught up in an infinite loop of scrolling or emails can quickly spiral out of control, like we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. especially when you're lying down and you're just in such a comfortable position, you're just going to lose track of time. Yeah, you can easily lose your entire morning if you do this. If you have a lot to do that day, or you can lose sleep, especially if that blue light is just shining and blasting your eyes right before you're bed. trying to sleep. Yeah. yeah. So if this is a huge problem for you, I'd recommend using a morning routine or a night routine where you just put your phone away mm-hmm. and just focus on self-care where you can wind up for the day or wind down for the evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or just even leave your phone in like another room completely. I just put it away. So I'd say this is garbage to your habit. Don't do it every day but we deserve to veg out maybe like on the weekend or something once in a while. So sure. The next bad habit is kind of similar and that is snoozing. Oh yeah. Snoozing just makes me more tired. I feel like, yeah. Sleeping in too much can definitely make you too tired. It's like both ends of the spectrum, mm. sleeping too little or too much. Yeah. Both so I think you tired. I think snoozing isn't so much of a bad habit, but it's more a negative side effect of poor planning. So when you wake up in the middle of your REM sleep cycle, from the deepest stages of sleep, it's really hard to wake up. Yeah, that's true. So ever since I've been using sleeping apps, like the one I'm using now is Sleep Cycle, or you can use something similar, Mm -hmm. I've noticed myself snoozing less because it tries to wake me up while I'm in my light sleep. Mm. So you can try a sleeping app or you can try something that simulates the sunrise, like Mm. one of those lights that just gradually get brighter Mm. to ease you into waking up. Or like those smart curtains that like automatically go up at a certain time or something (laughs) yeah and if none of these methods work then consider if you're even getting enough sleep and if Mm -hmm. not then you should try to go to bed earlier so yeah snoozing just feels terrible but there are ways to avoid it so i'll put this in the dumpster tier Mm -hmm. if you're able to figure it out it shouldn't be happening to you next we have working when you're sick or when you're ill and a lot more people do this than i realize now that i'm working in the hospital i see it more frequently yeah there's a lot of times where i just tell them like you've got to take some days off Like, for example, you just had surgery. You probably shouldn't be driving. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so when your body's trying to heal, the whole point is that you want to let it heal. Even if you're just sitting at your desk and studying, you're still overstimulating your brain and diverting all the energy it needs to recover to to doing something else. So, So if you have an infection or a stomach flu or something like that, just take a day off from school or from work. Let yourself recover. You know, self care is really important. And do everyone else a favor too by not spreading around disease. Yeah, be contagious. Mm-hmm. So dumpster tier, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is a hard one. I mean, I get that people need to work and make money too. And if illness is not that severe, then maybe. But there's just too many variables. Mm-hmm. So we should have had like, I don't know, a tier for like once a year or something. <laughs> once a year. Like junk tier or something. <laughs> Or like rubbish tier. Yeah, if you're in like financial ruin, you have no choice. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, we are moving on to bad study habits now. So the first habit here is making notes. Technically, not a bad habit. It's a habit that can be bad、mm-hmm. if you make bad notes. Yeah, definitely. It's probably one of the most popular study methods too, but also probably one of the most time-consuming and least efficient. Especially if you get caught up in how it looks, like the aesthetics of it. Like、trying to make your notes look really, really pretty, it's just a complete waste of time in comparison to all the other work you can actually be doing. Yeah, I remember back in the day, like way back in like high school or college,、mm-hmm. I used to put so much effort into making these epic, like comprehensive notes, and it took up so much of my time.、Mm-hmm. But by the end, I like barely had any time to review it. Like the test was just around the corner.、Mm-hmm. So it really depends on the kind of notes that you make. Like you have a solid understanding of the material. And you can just make short and concise notes with lots of pictures and diagrams or mind maps, which is good for like quickly referencing things. But if you don't understand the material that well, and you just try to rewrite everything, then you're just transcribing what the teacher's saying. You're not really learning either, and you're just gonna forget it. Yeah. So waste of time.、Uh, kind of depends, but I'm gonna say personally, dumpster tier. Agreed. And we've also made a video about this already. If you haven't. Seen it? You should check it out. It's one of our most popular ones. Which brings us to our next habit, which is reading your notes. But actually, this involves anything from rereading your notes to、mm-hmm. rereading your textbook to even rewatching a lecture for review.、Mm-hmm. And I would say even rewriting your notes falls into this category. Yep. Yeah. Like summarizing your notes, right? Oh, sure. Like basically any type of study method I mentioned above. That is passive,、mm-hmm. like a passive study method.、Yeah. It's just inefficient. But if you're doing it twice, like you're rereading, then that's like doubly inefficient.、Mm-hmm. You know, that's a bad habit, I would say. Okay, so it's okay if you're just like looking something up in your notes to reference or to double check something, but it's not a good it's not a good idea to be rereading or like rewatching to review. Yeah, like doing it for a second pass. Yeah. Because it's passive,、mm-hmm. yeah. Because the thing is, you can see what's on the page as you're reading it,、mm-hmm. so it's easy, it's effortless. So the material is most likely not going to be retained. Remember, when you're studying, the more cognitive effort you use, the more the info will stick.、Right. So instead, what you should be doing is covering up your notes and then trying to recall them instead of just reading them. The difference here is basically recognizing what's already on the page versus being able to recall. What's on the page because you actually know it.、Mm-hmm. So rereading dumpster tier. Yeah, there's <laughs> way better ways to be using your time. Nice. So next we have not going over your answers. Basically, not going back and figuring out why you got certain test questions or homework assignments wrong, and not double checking the answers you got right and making sure you got them for the right reasons too. And it wasn't just like lucky guess. You know? Yeah, there's really no technique to this. This isn't some. Study hack that requires practice to get good at. You literally just go review your answers after taking an exam, or a practice test,、mm-hmm. or doing a problem set or something. It's just a good study habit、yeah. to have. Right. Yeah. I think if there's like one skill or habit that like top students, if we're going to use our lingo, are really good at, it's it's this one. Yeah. Either this one or getting enough sleep. It's probably one of those. And I know it's tedious, especially when you have to like ask the teacher after class and stay after class just to check over your tests and see what you got right and wrong.、But、I'm telling you, if your final is comprehensive,、mm. then you best be going over your midterm questions because、mm-hmm. you don't want to be getting the same question wrong twice. Right. You know? Yeah. So the bad habit of not going over your answers. Dumpster. Dumpster for sure. Dumpster. The next bad habit is not doing retrospective review. So what this basically means is that you're not keeping track of your study topics, which ones you know well, which ones you don't know well, and you need to review more. Especially when your exam is just around the corner, you really need to be focusing your time on your weaknesses.、Mm. And the only way to do that is to actually track your progress.、Yeah. So an easy way to do this is using retrospective review. It's a way to track your progress so that you know exactly what you should be studying on any given day, based on how well you've done in the past with it, or based on how long it's been taking you to review something. Yeah, but we're basically not going to go into that much detail about retrospective review in this video. We'll put links to other prior videos that we made in the description if you're interested.、Mm-hmm. But as this for a habit, it's dumpster.、Mm-hmm. I would say waste a lot of your time. All right, so now we're going to move on to general life-related habits. 
So first, we have the habit of spending time with people who drag you down. <laughs> This includes people who are ungrateful, people who take advantage of you, manipulate you, who hurt your self-esteem and make you feel bad about yourself, about other people, and those who make you feel insecure or, I don't know, just toxic relationships in general. Yeah, in the end, our happiness is largely affected by the relationships in our lives. Mm. So no one can really tell you what to do. You follow your heart and you spend the time with whoever you choose. But I believe that the company you keep around shapes your future mm -hmm. so a small example would be how i became a doctor maybe this is the same for you but my friend group in college we all became doctors we all had the same goal and so we all pushed each other and we supported each other along the way and we eventually all got there obviously i had to do all the work myself but i think had i not been hanging around with those friends or had i had different friends with different motives then maybe I wouldn't have gotten to med school. Yeah, that's very true. I totally agree with you that spending time with certain people can motivate you also. But yeah, if you spend a lot of time with people who drag you down, it can be hard to break that cycle. Uh, unless it's like your child or something. You know, People who are adults make their own decisions. And who you allow into your life, whether it's you know beneficial or not, that's, that's your decision. Yeah, so uh, I would put this in the dumpster tier, yeah. basically. Um, next, we have the bad habit of abusing substances. Mm, yeah, this one's kind of vague. Yeah, and probably taboo, but let's just quickly touch on it. Right, because there's a lot of substances out there. One that we like to talk about is caffeine, which sure. is actually also yeah, considered a substance. Slash yeah, drug. sure. Caffeine abuse and addiction is a thing, so use it responsibly. But you can use it at least once a day, I would say. Drinking certain beverages like coffee or tea... Link in description to a video we just made about that. Drinking coffee or tea can be quite beneficial. But let's talk about the harder drugs. So like legal drugs like alcohol and for us, cannabis. I'd say okay in moderation. I'd say once a week maybe. Mm, definitely not daily. Okay. But you know, yeah, we're social and we need to let loose every now and then. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta live. But when it gets to a point where you're just drinking too much on your own or when you're just getting high mm -hmm. all the time on your own at home, then be very cautious because that's a slippery slope towards dependency and, and possibly addiction. Definitely. Yeah, but in general, I would say abusing any drugs or any substances is a dumpster. Yeah. You need to be responsible and, and be safe about it mm -hmm. and use them in moderation. Okay, next we have the bad habit of not knowing where you spend your money. Some of you on this channel might not be thinking about your finances. For example, if your parents are still paying for your stuff. But mm. according to our analytics, the majority of you on this channel are in your 20s and 30s. And personal finance is definitely a big responsibility in your life. Yeah. It's kind of simple math, though, right? It's like if you spend more than you're making, you're net negative over time. But you won't know that unless you're actually tracking how you're doing your spending. Yeah. If you're trying to get your finances in order, or if you're striving to build wealth for yourself and your family, then ask any personal finance expert. I guarantee you that the first thing they'll say is to simply just start tracking where your money goes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everything else would just fall into place. And just speaking from our perspective, um, so many doctors who finish their training and they start to make decent money, if they don't track, then mm -hmm. they can easily go into debt or even go broke because they we weren't taught how to manage our finances in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So don't let that be you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, you know, be aware of how you're spending your money. And this isn't even something you have to do like day on a daily basis or even like a weekly basis. So for that reason, I would even say it's trashed here. Not even worse than that because you don't have to do it too often. Yeah, you, but you have to do be, it, you don't. Just that's be aware it. of it. Yeah. So the next habit is worrying about things that are out of your control. These are things like other people's behavior, other people's opinions about you, or even like the bigger state of things, like how the economy is doing or politics in general. Yeah, those are just all out of your control. But we still worry anyway, mm -hmm. right? Because worrying and anxiety in general, those are basic human traits. Mm -hmm. Like worrying about things within your control keeps you away from danger and you know kind of steers you away from the wrong path. But when you're worrying about things you can't control, uh, this leads to a cycle that you know leads towards depression mm -hmm. and burnout. But there are many ways to take back control, like recognizing, acknowledging the thoughts that you're having around those topics, 
or using controlled breathing to regulate your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system and just surrounding yourself with people who actually care about you. Yeah, there's a lot of ways, but this is a huge topic and we're not about to get into like stoicism here. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I know that a lot of people on this channel are striving to become good doctors or engineers or, or teachers. And the path ahead is full of things mm -hmm. that you can't control. So you just got to focus on what you can control. You wake up every day with a purpose, mm -hmm. stay consistent with your studies, your health, your faith. And when you fail, you just got to take a pause and learn what you did wrong so that you don't repeat your mistakes, mm -hmm. right? These are all things within your control and you can control how much enjoyment you get from the journey ahead. Mm -hmm. And for all the other stuff, just acknowledge it, try to move on. It's really, really hard to do, of course, but worrying is just going to make it worse. So yeah, dumpster tier. Dumpster tier, I would say. So as you can see, there are a lot of bad habits to be aware of, um, but they all have varying degrees of damage. So focus on the dumpster tier ones first and removing those from your life. The other ones you can start cutting back on in moderation and you can deal with them more intentionally later on. Yeah, it's basically the same thing as building good habits. You can get a snowball effect going. Like the more habits you break, the easier it is to continue improving your life. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have the good habits to build at the same time. So you can even pull off a double snowball effect or like a re reverse snowball effect <laughs> because building good habits is going to take care of some of the bad ones as well. Exactly. And if you haven't seen our other video yet, 20 habits of top tier students, then you can definitely check it out right here.